This week on Life Off Road, we're towing up to the high country and heading off to explore Mount Skeen and its possible icy challenges. We found some snow, finally! Woo! They kept going forward and back, forward and back. What are we going to do? Shovel a new track all the way to the end of the mountain? The thickness is just increasing. Ground clearance was a bit of a problem for them. <laughs> Made a hell of a lot of noise, but unfortunately just couldn't quite get the grip. Will we make it to the summit? Keep watching to find out. <laughs> no matter how far forward one car was going to get, it was going to make it difficult for the rest. It's only going to get worse from here. Hi, I'm Aaron from Patrol Apart. I've got Paul along with me today and we're heading out into our backyard into Mount Skeen. Good morning, Mike, and welcome to a very cold adventure. And we see you're still wearing shorts and t-shirt. Yeah, that's the best possible thing to wear out here. It's still only 11 degrees, so that's not bad. And what are you expecting from today? Well, I'm gonna take the genie out of the bottle and say we're gonna see snow. I've heard Simon and the Life Off-Road crew have had a bit of a bad history with trying to find snow. So we are going snow hunting this week. So I haven't actually seen real snow before, so I am so excited. Yeah, Simon, it's probably been four years since I was on this track and we couldn't get through the last time. Pretty mild, so the snow might be melting quick. Victoria is very lucky in that we have snow. You've got to be in the right place in the right time. We've got people over from Western Australia, people from Queensland, people from New South Wales. I've never done a full drive venture in the snow. It's definitely looking forward to see what the Ranger has to offer. Came over the bridge, had a look at Lake Gildan, incredible amount of water. It's about 97% full, it's at its limit. I've driven through that area on the bed when there's been no water there at all, so it's a big variance in what Lake Gildan does there. Coming into the Jameson Caravan Park, it was beautiful. It really just shows you what the Vic High Country's got to offer. So we towed our caravans to here because it's a little bit hectic to get to Mount Skeen. Jamison definitely is the gateway to the high country. Four wheel drivers can go from here through God knows how many tracks and end up in Dargo. We are down to about 18 psi, just making sure we had good traction while we're up there in the snow. A bit easier rather than have to do it up on the track. Your hands are going to freeze off a little more trying to lower those tyre pressures. Well, I'm Michael from Piranha Off Road. This is Mike from Trek Hardware. We've brought some chains with us, we're going to see if we can use them. He's running bigger tyres than standard on this sort of car. A couple of sets here, we'll just see which one sits best. This particular chain is the D128S. It's made from the heaviest link size that we do. The diamonds are staggered. That's perfect. If you can pick up this central bar easily and put your hand under it, it's a bit loose. We think running them tight is the right way to go. If it's a loose chain, it's going to come round and whack things and create chaos and mayhem. So Michael, where do you find a bit more information about the chains if they need to ask any questions? Ring us up and ask for me or piranhaoffroad.com.au. The website's got plenty of info. Went through past the school, gave a wave to all the kids inside in the classroom, headed over the bridge over the Jemmy River. Basically straight onto the dirt road within less than a K of heading out of the caravan park. Today, I'm riding shotgun with Big Vaughn. Driving for you, so much pressure, eh? And you're just back from the Big Red Bash? Yeah, amazing trip out there with our team. We take seven or eight people along. Hectic schedule, and we basically had to drive straight from Birdsville. I was pretty impressed I'm towing the 13 footer out here this weekend, but you bought the massive 17. The good thing about having a large van is we can get around 875 watts solar up top. Lots of batteries. You can fit all the creature comforts in a van that's an extra couple of feet. Some people prefer their quick setup, and some people are happy to spend five minutes setting up their hybrid camper. At MDC, we've got a camper for everyone. Straight away we're into a climb. It's basically an unsealed road. Some great inclines, you could definitely feel the temperature change as we got higher. It's a really well maintained road. Beautiful drive through beautiful alpine scenery. You could definitely see the high country and the valley as we drove up the hill. At the moment we're at 1500 metres. You would not want to put a wheel in the wrong spot. The drop-offs here are just unforgivable. Although it is a transit road between Jemison and Lacola, 
It's actually closed during the designated snow season. It's a closed track. Because we're with the guys from Four Wheel Drive Victoria, we've got a special permit to be able to go see the snow. Four Wheel Drive Victoria have an arrangement with Parks Victoria that they can issue permits to access this road. The general public can't come up here during winter times. We control it very tightly. We have to. If someone does the wrong thing, we could lose the permit as quick as a flash. It's all about making sure we are looking after the people but doing things the right way. As you do in the high country here, we came around a corner and there was a tree across the road. It was possible to get around it, but we decided to stop and tidy the track up. Very, very fortunate Michael had carried a chainsaw. One of the boys had an axe. I've got an axe in the back of my car. This is not really a log across the road. The actual log itself has been cleared away already. There is a clear path through here. But the responsible thing to do, especially if you've got the right equipment, is to pull over, clear this off the track, and make sure that everybody can comfortably get through easily and safely. Chainsaw's out, so let's get into it. If you can clear a track instead of driving around and making a rut around the track, then that's the right thing to do so the next person just can go straight through. We take on a little bit of responsibility of making sure we're clearing the tracks. Four-wheel drive responsibly to keep tracks open. Warm these up, he's good to go. We've cleared that tree and we've made it passable for anyone. And it's not just for us, it might be emergency service vehicles that's coming up to rescue someone that's lost or missing, or someone that doesn't have the tools to clear that track. Michael did a fantastic job. Can you take the pants off underneath and just have yeah. the chaps? Uh, can you wear it in for the rest of the day? <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. lend them to you and you can do that. <laughs> no, we don't want to see that. Now Michael, and up here in the high country, if you are carrying a chainsaw, it's important to carry all of the right PPE, the safety equipment. Yes, I do have chaps, I do have a helmet with the visor and the earmuffs built into it, is what you should be using. The Victorian Four Wheel Drive Association, they run training courses to clubs, so you can book in for those. We encourage people to become members of Four Wheel Drive Victoria and join one of our clubs. There's some 86 clubs right at this moment, but the main thing about what we do is to educate people to look after the environment so that we can enjoy what we want to go out and do. The benefits of becoming a member, one of the main things is the insurance we offer for public law will be the person that's excellent. If you want to become a member of a four-wheel drive club, give the office a call. We'll put you onto the website straight away. We'll help you find a club that's in your location, and whether it's being car specific or somewhere close at home for you. Here at Patrol Apart in Navarra Park, we're a company made up of full drive enthusiasts. And Paul, what vehicle have you got with you today? I'm driving my personal y Series 5 Y62 today, Simon, which we've basically kitted out with many of the products that we would choose to sell. We're a company that stems its roots from full driving the automotive industry. We've been around for 16 years and we started as a family business. Our guys really want to get a good understanding about what the customer wants the product for, what they're doing with their car, what model their car is, and really make sure that the products that we're selling them actually are fit for purpose. We have a motto that if we won't put it on our own car, then we won't put it on your car either. We were heading up the road, we went past about 1300 metres and no sighting of snow, everyone was starting to get a bit worried. Within about an hour of driving up the hill to Mount Skeen, it was again nice gravel track, a bit of mud, you could see the water's been there, but there's no snow. And so we're thinking, oh, here we go. Another trip, no snow. However, drive around this corner, and then all of a sudden, the whole scenery's just changed, and they start to get little snow patches on the side of the mountain. First sign of snow, Vaughan. Wow, look at this. How good. What sort of conditions should we expect driving through this, mate? The ice, the snow is very slippery. It just creates that icy film over the top of the track. Especially at this level, it's been very slushy, so... Just take it easy as per usual. Just take it nice and easy. There were people here who had never seen snow before or never driven in it, so I think there was a bit of excitement about the fact that we'd actually found some snow. Anya, stark contrast from the Big Red Bash. Magical, up in the clouds, I can't believe it. We've done this trip absolutely many, many, many times, and we've done it many times looking for one thing. It's here, underneath us, this white powder. Like, it was just a split second. It went from nothing to two foot of snow. For me, I've never seen snow, never been in the Vic High Country. So the drive coming in from a gravel road straight into just this white abyss of snow was amazing. Snowman. No. 
Some people have come 4,000 k's away just to see this, so it's been an amazing time and something that myself and all the team have just thoroughly enjoyed. So pretty, isn't it? Is your camera waterproof? Ah! Oh. <laughs> I threw it at the window, not the, oh, I did get the camera. Yeah, you gotta you got go in there. Well, I mean, it was quite clear, quite great visibility around. And every now and again, these huge mists would roll through and you couldn't sort of see a few metres in front of you. We came up to this big opening and the track disappeared. It was nothing but virgin snow. We need to make a new track just to get the rest of the convoy through. I was told to give it the berries and have a good go and try and get the patrol through. They gave it their best shot just to plough through before they just got stuck. Well guys, we've definitely found some snow. As we get higher and higher up Mount Skeen, the thickness is just increasing. We're now at a point now where the snow is so thick and so dense that we cannot get any further. There's no way he's going to get up that. Leave a like below or I'm going to slap your mama. He was immediately chassis deep in the snow and the boys got the shovels out to start digging around. He carried this for 5,000 kilometres for one reason, snow. So Simon's on the shovel. I can see up the track at least a couple of hundred metres. And I'm like, what are we going to do? Shovel a new track all the way to the end of the mountain? I don't think so. This is going to be a bit of a problem. <laughs> Only 600 more metres to go. It doesn't feel like it's going to do it. I don't like your negativity. <laughs> Fair we're up it, and we've probably got another good 100 metres of elevation to go. Proving to be quite difficult. Made a hell of a lot of noise, but unfortunately just couldn't quite get the grip. We just kept ploughing into the snow, and every time it sort of pushed quite a bit up there, and that was sort of its momentum done couple of hours worth of backwards and forwards and digging and it just was too deep for us today. Eventually we end up having to winch it backwards off the Troll Boys Y62 because it just sort of kept sliding and just getting stuck off to the side. The boys from patrol the parts, huge amount of experience. This is their backyard, this is the area they know well. We've been here for a couple of hours now, I think we've only travelled around about, I'd have to say maybe 100 metres if you're lucky. This goes to show that it can get real likely out here real quick. Steve, what do you feel like having for lunch? It's lunchtime. I brought along the Cassius Grill. Little eco-friendly, biodegradable barbecue in the paper box. It's a nice, simple, easy setup. Comes in its own little paper packaging. It's got some legs to stand it on. As you can see inside, it's got the volcanic rock. This is completely and utterly disposable afterwards. You can bury a hole, put it in the ground. It's totally biodegradable. We've got our Cassius grill from Leisure Tech. And guess what? We're gonna have some fresh salmon on the snow. Ripper little product. I just didn't know how to go with the snow. Greg had the little barbie going. We had a little bit of salmon and a couple of snags, which was pretty cool. Haven't done that before in the snow. Just perfectly. What do you say, Ethan? What do you say? Oh, that's so good. Plan now. Bring up one of the vehicles with chains on. There's no point pushing the cars through and trying to ruin the track. They've got a vehicle with chains on and some good traction to cut through the snow, make a clear path, and get us through. People ought to know if they're going to come up here what they should have on board. It would be a smart move to have a set of chains. Making sure, of course, they fit. So often we see people get chains and they don't actually fit their tyres. The Ranger had some chains on. They wanted to see how much of a difference that made. Ground clearance was a bit of a problem for them. Probably should have go a bit further back, but I tried to go round it. I got myself stuck. I'm carrying some tread boards on the roof, so the combination of trains and treads, you've got to be a little bit self-sufficient. It's essential to make sure you're very well prepared, like any four-wheel drive trip. The snow is certainly something a bit different. You've got to make sure you've got a good shovel, you've got to make sure you've got snow chains, warm clothes, and even the change of warm clothes. It did take him a fair amount of pressure and time to get through it, but he got up to it and just past the MDC Y62. Piranha's struggling a little bit. It's time for the other big patrol to have a crack. Paul came through in his Y62. Plenty of horsepower in those Y62s. He was giving it plenty of ride force. They 
had a bit more of a wind up and I think they've got slightly larger tyres. Gave it the absolute berries and just kept going. It was amazing to see. Ploughing out the snow and then compacting the snow just certainly gave a bit better base to be able to grab some traction. The patrol boys were definitely making a bit more extra headway by doing a large rocky method, so they would get a bit of a wind up and run it up quite a bit far up the hill, get to a certain point, come back, get traction again and go again. They kept going forward and back, forward and back. The piranha ranger would come in and attach to them, give them a bit of a snatch, pull them back. We used the new monkey fist kinetic rope to pull, pull backwards. I've had that in the case for a little bit and been waiting for an opportunity to use it. You're meant to be able to hit a lot harder with the kinetic strap than a snatch strap. It was pretty cool to see how it worked. We're able to pull him backwards with a kinetic rope, just snatch backwards a bit. Had another crack. Made it another 20 or 30 metres. No matter how far forward one car was going to get, it was going to make it difficult for the rest. You've got a road that's formed underneath the snow and it's got a curve to it and you end up in the gutter, you struggle really hard to get back out of that gutter. It's only going to get worse from here. You can see how hard we've worked to get two vehicles this far. We're now in the middle of a big reverse recovery. We've now got the patrol off the track in such a position, we're going to winch it back across the track out of the ditch on the right hand side, get it back into the ruts and then hopefully drive it back out. We just didn't have enough time in the day to spend the time to get all the way through. It's three degrees up here and it's only going to get cooler. This is where you make a sensible decision and you go, you know what, we can't get any further. Once we called it, we decided we'll try and turn the cars around and stop for a bit of lunch. It was good to see everyone having a bit of a play in the snow, plenty of snowball fights going on. <laughs> Deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to go back to camp, relax, get around a fire and warm up. We were just hoping to see a little bit of snow, but it was two foot deep when we got up the top there. It's gone from zero to hero really quickly. The snow driving here can be quite dangerous. It just seems quite daunting when you look down and it's just endless. The oil that's inside the shock absorber is what we call an all-weather oil. That all-weather oil is able to work up to minus 38. The oil itself, it doesn't freeze up and become to the point where it's a solid. It remains as a liquid the entire time. And that's what's in a tough dog shock absorber. That shock absorber with the all-weather oil is able to operate between minus 38 all the way up to 120 degrees Celsius. That's the beauty of an all-weather oil in a foam cell shock absorber. All the foam cell shock absorbers all feature the all-weather oil. Oil. The descent out there was just as good as coming in. Absolutely beautiful and breathtaking looking over the mountains. Just that height difference between 1400 and 1500 metres is staggering on the temperature and the conditions. Put a nice fresh pair of warm clothes on and head down the brewery for a couple of beers. I think we're all looking forward to a, a good meal there and a, a nice warm building to sit in. Came round the corner and like somebody had flicked the switch, the snow was gone, the fog was gone. Tonight should be another great way to end a perfect day with a great bunch of people. Looking forward to seeing what someone's got in store for us tomorrow. If I know Simon, there's always going to be something interesting and entertaining. I'll see what trouble I can get the D-Max into and see what action and fun we can have. <laughs>